five things that I think you need to know about the interplay between autism and anorexia. Now, disclosure, this is from my personal point of view, really, rather than a professional point of view. Personal point of view as someone who has a diagnosis of autism um, and somebody with a history of anorexia and whose anorexia only became significantly more manageable following the diagnosis of autism. And the five ideas that I'm gonna share with you today are based on a talk that I gave at the Peace Pathway Conference yesterday, uh, which was an international conference based on the work of the Peace Project at the Maudsley, which is a new care pathway for people with comorbid anorexia and autism. And I sit on the expert reference group there. Point number one. Anorexia is a bully to be beaten. Autism is a friend to be made. So when we've got these two diagnoses, anorexia and autism, then we need to work together to beat the anorexia. So we often use the analogy of anorexia being like a bully on the shoulder. And we're thinking together about how can we beat the anorexia. We want it to, to go away. We want to beat it, to overcome it. It is not a positive thing. Autism, on the other hand, is a diagnosis, a label that we will live with forever and we need to recognise the positives there and to run towards this and to work together to make friends with this diagnosis and learn how we can have it as part of our lives and live successfully and manage with it. So anorexia we look together to beat, autism we look to befriend. Point number two is that language matters. Think about identity first versus person first language. So particularly when it comes to anorexia and autism, I feel personally that we should address these two issues completely differently. So I am autistic, but I have or I had anorexia. So I identify as an autistic person. I find that really important. I talk about autism a lot. I am autistic. I feel proud of it. Some people might choose to be referred to as a person with autism, so it removes the label from them a little bit. But for me, I am autistic. I'm proud and loud and whatever about that, and that matters. However, I don't think it's positive to say I am or I was anorexic, but rather I suffered with or I have or I had anorexia to remove me a little bit from that label. And the reason why that's important to me is because anorexia can become very all consuming. And when we, I, over identify with that label, that can drive some of our decisions, behaviors, actions. And at its worst, anorexia really has you in its grips, this bully that really takes over your thinking and your behavior and your actions. And if you identify with it really closely, if you're using language like I am anorexic, then it makes you identify with that first and foremost above anything else. And remembering this is a bully we want to beat. So I am autistic, but I had anorexia. For me, that difference in language might not sound like a big thing, but it really, really matters. And again, for me, exploring that and picking it apart and thinking about which of these labels I wanted to own and which one I wanted to destroy really mattered as part of my kind of therapeutic and recovery process. Point number three is that the interplay between anorexia and autism is really complex and we should always be asking ourselves the question, am I seeing autism or am I seeing anorexia? And the reason why this really matters is because sometimes we need to make exceptions or allowances or bend ourselves a little bit to accommodate autistic traits, behaviors, challenges. However, anorexia is really clever and will jump on that and use autism as an excuse. And I certainly found that when I was ill and I had a diagnosis of autism, anorexia would be there going, hmm, you could tell them that you can't eat that because of the sensory issues, or mm hmm, you could tell them that you can't engage with that therapy because you find it too distressing, mm hmm, and it would try to manipulate my thoughts, my behavior, my action, in just the same way that anorexia tries to manipulate what you do all the time, always. The thing here is about building really good, honest, 
trusting relationships so that we can calmly explore what is autism, what is anorexia, what are appropriate and reasonable adjustments to be made for autism and at what point actually are we bending to the anorexia. This is really, really hard and we need to remember as well that a starved brain is one where autistic traits will kind of be exempt, sort of exaggerated so we might see the autism kind of coming out more. So it's hard and I don't know that there's like a really obvious answer here but I think building a really good trusting relationship so that at times of calm in those times when a person is holding on to the idea of recovery rather than illness we can explore openly and honestly what are the appropriate accommodations for the autism and perhaps which are the bits where anorexia is trying to game it and being really really clear and consistent in our expectations and the boundaries. Number four is to use the autistic traits that a person has to help them move towards wellness. So some of our autistic traits will drive the illness, our rules, our rigidity, sometimes the obsessive um, nature that we might have may drive the illness and might mean that we become more ill more quickly than neurotypicals. However, if we take those traits those behaviours, the way in which we see the world and we flip it and we use it to our advantage to try and drive wellness instead, then it might mean that we are more able, more determined to adhere to a really rigid meal plan, for example, or an appropriate amount of exercise or engaging with a therapeutic pathway than our neurotypical peers might be. So taking those traits, really understanding what autism looks like for this individual and taking those traits that were driving illness and flipping them and using them to help to drive wellness and recovery instead. And point number five, autism is for life. So when you are supporting someone who is both autistic and anorexic, we're hoping that they will move to a point of recovery with the anorexia and that's a whole other question. I always consider myself to be in recovery so this is something that could go wrong at any time and I have to really keep on it and I've been caught short on that in the past. However I can be in recovery from that. Autism? Not going anywhere. So at times it is exacerbated by starvation or other triggers and issues um, and other times it's more easy to manage. However, autism is a diagnosis I live with every single day and I have to work really carefully to manage it. I also had to reevaluate some of my aims and aspirations for myself based on the fact that I'm autistic and that isn't going away. So when I was very ill and I would imagine this future when I could eat again and I could throw parties and I'd have dinner parties with my friends, then I realized, yep, yeah, might get better from anorexia, might manage to control some of my anxiety, autism, not going away. So I had to re-evaluate what my aims and my goals were and what was realistic for me and to forgive myself for the fact that I might never become the person that I thought or hoped I might and instead to readjust what my hopes and aspirations for myself were and to become okay with that. When you're supporting someone who is autistic then we think very carefully in eating disorder recovery about how we'll transition back to life and work and managing in terms of food and diet and exercise but with autism we've got to think about the bigger picture as well what does self-care look like what does day-to-day -day managing look like how will we manage the anxiety that is such a key part of autism for many people what does that all look like how can we enable ourselves to better manage and remembering that managing our autism and living well with it will mean that the relapse of an eating disorder is far less likely in my opinion so learning to live well with autism for me has been a really key part in getting and staying relatively well. So there you go. Autism is a friend to be made whilst anorexia is a bully to be beaten. Two, language matters. I am autistic. I had anorexia. Three, the interplay between autism and anorexia is really complicated. Always ask ourselves is this a reasonable adjustment? Am I seeing autism or am I seeing anorexia? Four, 
We can flip autistic traits and behaviours to drive wellness when previously they had driven illness. Five, autism is for life. We need the skills, the confidence and the understanding to live well with autism if we are to prevent eating disorder relapse.